That's 1600 base damage. It's hilariously stupid. What else benefits from me continuously attacking? Hail of Agony! Hey! Prize in melee. Sucks to be Karn. To do this. And this. Which is hilarious! You know what sucks in this game? Standing still and casting for a long time. Ah, I'm dead. It'll poop, 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 poop. And it'll go. Do, 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 do. I did it. Hi, guys. And welcome to a video where we discuss gems and interesting mechanics going into this upcoming Necropolis League. If you're anything like me, which some of you might be, you will note that it has been exceedingly difficult finding the right build for you this league. Last league, we had so many transfigured gems and it was, I mean, you just, you kind of just picked something cause you didn't really know. However, there's actually with less gems <laughs> being released it's even harder to pick because now we're back in this like we know a lot of the stuff that's good but we don't really want to pick it because <laughs> we want something new and that's hard so i will do my best to go over the new gems and some of the ideas that i'm chasing rather than a specific build this time now let's start off with um new gems first of all it's a little update to Call of Arms. So Call of Arms cannot trigger more than one war cry at a time. Prize in melee sucks to be Karn. They did, however, lower the mana cost a little bit, so it's not as bad. Uh, but for the most part, Call to Arms is going to enable all the builds that didn't usually have access to it and make all the builds that used to have access to it a little bit worse because you can't get the keystone. So, <laughs> kind of. So, suck for some, cool stuff we can do for others. I mean, now you can have Enduring Cry on any build. Enduring Cry is incredibly powerful, especially if you can stack some cooldown recovery, duration, and war cry uh, effect. There's like multiple ways to really take advantage of that. Uh, we won't really delve too deep into that. So, they already nerfed Poison's Concoction from what I hear by like 15%. Uh, the footage they've shown so far does look, it actually looked pretty good. Especially, I mean, Poison Concoction is especially good for Poison, not just because it's in the name, but also because uh, any skill that can use LMP, GMP or anything like that, the less projectile damage doesn't apply to Poison, so that's why that's really good. And then this can... When you looked at the video footage they showed of the skill, you saw a surprising amount of uh, overlapping AoE hits. Uh, every now and then you would see it zoom off out to the side is hilarious um yeah but it did actually look to be potentially somewhat strong so they probably thought yeah it is too strong and they nerfed it uh it's one of those skills that just allow you to have a strong like because it doesn't have a weapon it just gives you a lot of base damage it's one of those things that needs to be baseline strong but also makes it really powerful and sometimes overpowered for leveling so it could be a good uh, early skill to use if you get it uh, it'll probably run into like normal poison concoction problems but should be a, a good one if you like that archetype you could try it again pathfinder comes to mind obviously uh, or uh, occultist those were kind of the two uh, tornado any build that uses a sec okay so tornado is like one of those that is always going to be do good in a two combo setup so it could be tornado Plus, uh, cremation, volcano, whatever, whatever transfigured setup you like there. Uh, tornado plus BV, tornado plus basically tornado plus X thing that doesn't need to be constantly casted. So you'll have like you cast, you put out your tornadoes, and then you'll do your other thing. And as long as you don't need to do both things at the same time all the time to maintain full damage, you're happy. Anything that benefits from some duration scaling because even though you can achieve maximum like damage with tornado without scaling duration two things will happen with duration it allows you to move and have another skill you can cast well first of all it allows you to not having to cast this skill as much so that allows you to move secondly that time can be spent on something else which could also be a skill and still leave you time to move so that's why like BV is good, cremation is good, those kind of skills and comboing them. 
One thing I've heard a lot of people talk about here is since you can't use Archmage on orbs anymore, and this is an orb, so you can't use Archmage here, is like E-Blade, uh, Energy Blade. Um, really good on Inquisitor, I think mostly, uh, especially because strength in scaling uh, with Shaper's Touch is kind of just cracked for in strength scaling uh, on Inquisitor. And then you build up a, a sizable yes pool, <coughs> and you cut it in, you cut it down for, with E blade. But then you use that base damage and you apply it to your skills. It's just really strong, and it you, works on all the orb skills and everything. Oh, also specifically E blade here, Inquisitor. It's because you need battle, battle mage. So the the weapon gets a lot of flat damage because it joins your ES. You battle mage that onto any skill you would like. Uh, and if you don't like the fact that you need to deal with all these different ailments and conversions, you can just throw lightning all in. Because it's also good because it has non-lightning damage here as well. But you just crit and ignore all res. So it's it just allows you to, uh, to try out a, lots of different skills. Lots of different combos. So that's why like Inquisitor, Energy Blade... Plus Battle Mage. It's just a good strong combo for anyone who just wants to experiment with any spell gem. Or even like cast and crit or whatever. You can cast and crit, you can spell, you can do anything really with this setup. Very strong. Now, I will say Energy Blade is more of a trade setup. Um, and in hardcore it's also a little bit scary. Uh, it benefits wildly from... Uh, high level enhanced setups as the energy blade loses less and less of its energy shield the higher you get the quality on it uh, while retaining the same amount of damage it's incredibly powerful so that's something to look for like if you are looking for a archetype you haven't played before energy blade definitely worth looking into uh, i know lance is gonna do his whole i'm gonna roll seventy thousand adorn jewels again and be miserable so if you are looking for min maxing these kind of setups uh he will definitely help you out with at least how to roll jewels <laughs> let's see moving on automation is probably gonna like i mean I'm, I'm i'm looking at this and i'm thinking trigger cooldowns automatically and all this i'm just thinking like there's probably some saboteur shenanigans you can do here and if you have spare sockets it'll just make your life easier sucks to be a minion build though uh because you don't have sockets, so you just you get to self-cast your convocation anyways. Also, we lost left click for that, but that's uh, we'll not talk about that right now. Incinerate, expands venting. As much as I love incinerate or the old incinerate, historically, uh, I still don't think this is enough. The problem, kind of the kind of the problem here with a lot of spells that come in, uh, is that it doesn't have a broken mechanic. And for spells these days, you need a broken mechanic. There are like, let, let me let me throw some mechanics that come to mind. Okay, so you have detonate dead. It's just hilariously overstated as a gem. Like the new detonating of the multiple explosions, chain reaction or whatever. Um, if you don't ever run out of corpses and you just look at the damage effectiveness for one cast, it's eight casts that can double hit that's 1600 base damage it's hilariously stupid uh, and then you have the stupid base damage of the corpse explosion now you do need to get the desecrate in there but there are ways to do that and even if you can even if you like alternate between the corpse skill and then detonate i mean you're still looking at an i mean what is it 800 percent damage effectiveness skill with a hilariously big hit from the corpse damage, it's it's kind of... So that's one thing you can do. Then there's Ball Lightning, which can tick 13 times with enough AoE. That's one of the good skills. However, you can move, at least, while you do this. It requires a lot of AoE investment, and then it becomes good. Then you'll have, like, Awakened uh, Cascade stuff, where you have, like, more overlapping AoEs. Um, where you have multi-hitting on the same skill. So essentially you turn one skill into hitting five, you'll have magma, uh, rolling magma balls, uh, which you can also get to, once you get enough AoE, you can have like five hits of that same skill with hilarious damage effectiveness as well. Like what we're looking at here in PoE is that to have a spell being good, 
It needs some kind of mechanic that overlaps AOE, that multi-hits in a silly way, that has like some kind of scaling that makes it absolutely cracked. Uh, we're getting more and more that. I mean, this scale down here, absolutely inspiring. When you then do like adorned and minion damage scaling, it's also like some of like that's kind of that's another like vector. You need like a special vector for a skill to be really strong. Now, okay, what does Incinerator Venting do? Well, I mean, so it has compared to normal Incinerate, it has six more stages. I think compared to the old Incinerate, this does like. 50% more damage for continuous casting, but you need to cast for a little longer. You know what sucks in this game? Standing still and casting for a long time. Ah, I'm dead, right? I would actually argue that these baseline incinerate as a skill probably needs to be buffed by like 50% to make it truly like a competitive skill. Now, not everything needs to be competitive, but like competitive in your mind to be like, oh, I would want to use this compared to this other thing. I don't really care because I don't even think that would make it competitive in, the, in like a racing center. I don't care about that. It's just like, it doesn't really, I don't believe this is going to be enough to make either of these two good enough. I think the gap was too large for any channeling skill to, to like for any of these two to, to be strong enough that way. So we talked about E-Blade. Now, this is another thing I really want to talk about here, which is Lancing Steel as a tool to proc other skills. Some of you guys might have seen this little post here. Um, and I will try and break it down for you real quick, what this actually means. I will also post all these things um, in the comments below or in the description so don't worry about that the way cast and crit works is that you attack you crit and that triggers a spell okay that's like the baseline of it okay so the faster you attack as long as let's just assume you always crit we we, we assume we made a build that always crits Cast on crit, I'll just go here. As you can see with no, every every 655 milliseconds, you can essentially cast a spell by critting. That means you need this attack rate. That means you can do it six times per second. It is one of the best vessels for generating more casts. It is probably the best. If you want to have, instead of going cast speed and trying to cast them manually, the better way is generally speaking to cast on crit them just that's baseline it's if that is a possibility it is generally speaking one of the better vessels to to essentially get to cast uh, this is specifically for self-casting that's why almost nobody self casts these days they will put things on things that have a duration they will put them on totems, they will put them on traps, well, they will throw out and they'll have multiple things exploding at the same time. They will cast and crit them. Self-casting is hilariously bad overall. So we're always trying to trigger or move the spells away to something else. Cast and crit is one of them. It's really strong. Now, one of the things about Lancing Steel is that it opens up an opportunity because of its insane hit rate so Lancing Steel before Lancing Steel are spraying already could be used for this. Um, it is an attack that you attack with it and then it fires multiple uh, uh, projectiles in sequence. Now, why is this important? One of the important parts here is that it has a set fire rate. And this fire rate actually lines up quite nicely with cast and crit. And the reason why this is is because the the, um, the consistency of the hits lining up with the crits means that you don't have to like, you can even stop and move. You can like fire, move, fire, move, fire, move. And it just keeps continuously firing, meaning that you have full uptime of your spells coming in. Uh, obviously it doesn't, you don't have a lot of time to move. You can move a little bit, but there's a secondary thing you can do as well, which is you can fire two of them in sequence. As long as you offset them, you can have two different lancing steels firing in sequence, offset with each other, and you get double the amount of attacks happening. Now, why is this important? It's important because you can actually trigger a spell as long as it's not the same spell in, okay. 
So the way casting crit works is spell is attached to the casting crit gem. Whenever you crit with it, it puts that specific spell on a cooldown. If you link another spell while the first spell is on cooldown, you can trigger the other one. Then that will trigger and then the other one, the first one will come off cooldown and be triggered and then it'll it'll poo 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 like you can it's real western shooter here poo 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 right and that's really where the lanting steel shines is because it attacks so fast because it has all these and especially spraying uh, because it has more projectiles happening now let me then explain this thing uh showing you here all the different projectiles coming in now this total duration is 7.25 uh, the reason why this number is important is that this is the duration this skill is going to continue to fire. So you want to be able to fire a second round by the time that this finishes. That requires 1.4 attack speed. So that's why a lot of people are saying you should have 1.4 attack speed with landing steel of spraying. And you're like good to go for any like normal cast and crit setup. You don't even need the awakened one. What you can then do is that you could actually... You then need to it gets a little complicated now well let me first explain this here now as you can see here the first attack here if you actually attack fast enough to where you layer them that means that now to to do this second thing down here where you have the uh, layering attacks that i talked about if you want to double cast on crit you actually need um more attack speed so now you would need Double your attack speed will not quite double because it's really important that if you're continuously attacking that you don't layer both attacks on top of each other because you can only trigger once per second or once per tick and so you need to offset between the ticks and now this is come it's like it's a, the ser server tick is 30 milliseconds 33 milliseconds it's 30 times per second and so you need these to alternate in between those ticks and so you will need more attack speed for this to happen so as you can see here um two two and a half attacks per second is a good number to achieve here and you will start hitting in between what this is down here is trying to show you is trying to like visualize what this looks like when you're firing two attacks so this would be you know first spell hitting here then second spell hitting here then third spell hitting here and so on and so forth and all you need to know is that it works and it's really good now i'll give you a sheet here so this this here is an old uh, i'll post this as well this is an old uh little sheet some information because people actually used to play landing steel like this i wasn't really aware of this i hadn't really played it myself um but they used to uh just use like multi on normal landing steel and it essentially creates the same thing. It's uh, it's just spraying makes it way easier. And as you can see here, there are like multiple trigger rates creating the best the best setup for you here. As you can see, this is right on the nose where it's like you can't really go above. Okay, so this is really important. It's important that you don't start over procking because then it starts skipping. So there is like a level of attack speed that is correct here. For this to like really work out well and so like 2.4 is a really good number here because it's not too high if you ever find that something seems off it's probably your attack speed that is off because you lined it up too closely with each other and then they start shooting together rather than separately i will say one of the good things about the regular setup here with 14 is that the 14 is actually hilariously good for um, cast and crit because at 14 32 milliseconds uh, that it can proc it, it actually lines up really well it lines up to something like seven or like who oh, wait a minute he has he has the number in here it actually lines up to 6.89 perfectly triggering at 6.89 per second by just firing one that crits all the time it's that good and so all you're looking for is to have a second one layering in in between and it'll go and it's crazy okay so that's lancing steel uh, definitely look up <coughs> look at this information and let's say you have two equal damaging skill gems right it could be um arc and spark 
Maybe that's not the best one. Maybe it's like Ice Nova and Frost Nova. Let's say they do an equivalent amount of hit damage per cast. Now, instead of instead of using another support gem to support your Shock Nova, you should rather put in Ice Nova. It's going to do two things for you. It's going to lower the mana cost of your of the first Nova because you're not getting a gem multiplier. And because you can trigger both at perfect rates, and if they're the same power in terms of DPS, you're going from increasing your damage by what, like 40% with a good skill gem to 100% with a second spell with this setup. It doesn't need to be a good combo setup. It could also be that... Oh, I have this like lightning spell that doesn't hit that hard, but I would like to shock, so I'm adding in um, crackling lands of blastation that d does the max shock and everything. And all of a sudden, you have max shock on your build on top of it, and it's like you can do those kind of combos as well. So it's just kind of a kind of an overpowered way, especially with spraying, because now it's easy to have all the projectiles to essentially reach the required number to have double cast on crit which was only really something people would do on deadeye in the past because they had enough cast speed and or attack speed plus projectiles and all this now you could do it on any class just use a lantern steel spraying moving on archmage archmage is strong in this league i don't think we need to talk about the power i mean archmage is you just stack mana you get flat damage for any spell you can't put it on orbs anymore so it's all self casting now a couple things as an avid Archmage player to talk about here, especially with self-casting. But the archetype of Archmage generally uh, resides in this area of the tree. Now, you can make builds that also reside over here, but for, for the League starters between Necro and Hierophant, they reside over here. Now, that means you have very little access, limited access to spell suppression. You can get it. You can take these nodes and you can go down here, take this stuff. It is possible to cap your spell suppression, but it's difficult. Secondly, avoidance is generally speaking terrible on this side. Unless you go Necromancer and you actually invest into block. And since you are mainly spell casting now with all the changes they've made to Archmage, you are going to stand still and receive lots of hate from the monsters. They are going to shoot you, attack you and all these things. So here comes the second part that's really difficult. Stuns. You have a hilariously small life pool and you're going to get hit pretty hard because you don't really have high mitigation you have high life pool damage your sobbing pool like energy shield plus mana plus life combines into your health pool let's just say it that way but your actual life total is low and the way stuns work is it looks at the hit that you receive regardless of what stops it whether it's energy shield or mana or whatever you get hit you get hit hard like it it might only take away like 30 percent of your total hp pool but that might be the equivalent of 100% of your life pool, which means you get stunned. Now, the upside here is that if as long as you have any kind of energy shield, the stuns are lower or uh, you can avoid a stun. So that's an upside at least. Uh, but definitely it's something that can absolutely get crushed by you enter a pack and then you just get stun luck to death. Or you just kind of get hit to death because you don't really have good avoidance. Now, you can build good armor. Um, I would suggest these notes over here, like a lot of builds will come through to pick up this wheel here and then you can go and pick up this jewel with energized armor and you take this and this and determination and it's fairly easy to get around 40,000 armor. So like physical damage is definitely manageable, early damage can be quite a lot harder, but then with spell suppression, but spell suppression is hard to get. Now and then a second thing that's difficult is I'm seeing a lot of MOM builds with like they will have like eight plus K mana and then they'll have a thousand mana regen. That's not a lot. So look for anything that recoups. Um, Mind Spiral is good, but recoup doesn't work against damage over time. And so when I see a build that has like a thousand, fifteen hundred mana regen and no life regen, like barely anything to speak of. And then you consider what happens when you start getting degened. Dude, that hurts. That's scary, especially since you, if you don't have a, you also, so a lot of builds also take uh, this wheel up here, which you should, it's really strong with the instant leech. Whenever you have anything to leech on, when you get your life leech, your energy leech, 
Um, it actually is really strong. Uh, if you went cast and crit, you would even have mana leech. I think that's something I'm, I might want to explore. Um, because it also allows you to play with Atlantic Steel playstyle rather than uh, having to self cast, and it opens up a lot of stuff. Um, but just know that your recovery might be really hard to deal with. Be careful of um, avoidance and mitigation. Uh, and be careful of stuns and the self-cast playstyle. Another thing that exacerbates this is that a lot of people will... They will not have enough uh, mana reduction. So I suggest that you take this wheel. And you definitely go and take this wheel. And you kind of have to run inspiration early on. Spell Echo is scary as well. Because it locks you in place for another cast. So be careful of these small traps. The archetype is really strong now. There's a lot you can do with it. Just know that it's not, like, you will see high numbers here, but they can be deceptive. Because the recovery is not great and, you know, avoidance mitigation is can be hard to set up. Uh, that's my little, little note of Archmage. Uh, one cool setup that can be done now is you can do Archmage Majolnir. If you want to try out that setup, just look at one mana left. Uh, AKA Connor, that guy has done this thing forever. I don't even want to, like, talk about how to set that up because... He'll just do it better. One thing that's another thing. So this is where this little uh, thing comes to mind that I've made here, which is Sanctuary of Thought. Increasing your AOE by this much is actually kind of great because now a lot of builds will have access. If a lot of AOM builds will have access to this node and this node to 130 mana or 130, not mana, uh, area of effect. Now, the moment you get that amount of area effect, one thing comes to mind. It is overlapping Awakened Spell Cascade. Now, here comes a little thing to show you again here. Uh, where do I have it? Right. So, once you get to around 300, you start noticing that even in the middle, you will actually start overlapping on monsters. There are certain spells that are better than others. Um, Stormcall is good. Uh, I've been looking at Absolution. I'm sure there's going to be other skills as well. I'll go in game and show you what some of this looks like now. So Absolution of Inspiring has, let's see here. Yeah, so that's 326. However, Absolution of Inspiring is not as good as Storm Call. But what I'll do here is I'll go close here. You'll get tight. Now we have the self poison. We can see how many overlaps we get now. I'll show you the difference. So if we get five, it's good. If we get not one, it's bad. So I think this is only one with Absolution of Inspiring right now. Yeah, it's just one. You could target outside a little bit and it's two or... We should be able to get three in one setup here. Uh, two. You can hit three. I know that. I don't want to like just know that this can hit three. But it gets, as you can see, it gets a little, gets a little weird finding the right spot and everything. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, just know you can hit three. Uh, now, here's the more interesting part. I also have a Storm Call. Now, this Storm Call, also this uh, way Awakening Spell is not leveled. It should be leveled, so that's also a thing. Now, if I click this Storm Call right here, five. Look at that. And I'm my Storm Call right now is only at... Oh, no, it's at 375. So it's right around this, this number. That Boom, you're starting to... Penta overlap. Holy shit. Because it goes from this to this. The perfect Venn diagram where everything converges in the middle. So there's, in the past, people have thought, oh, but as you scale AoE, it'll always leave this gap in the middle. No, 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 no. Certain skills with enough AoE starts to converge in the middle and it becomes correct. Now, a couple things happen when you do this. So, not only does this give you way more damage. So, you lose a damage gem, but you get a times 5 multiplier after applying this damage gem. So, it equates to something like 2.5 times more damage, which is worth chasing. Because it's hard to sometimes multiply scale your damage. Um, and you would even go... like It's even worth starting to give up uh, stuff like Ellie damage. Uh, and other just generic damage multipliers to go for AoE instead to then achieve the penta overlap. 
And not only does the Penta Overlap give you more damage than potentially generic modifiers, it also allows you to do this. And this. Which is hilarious! And now you can just kite and play inside the bubble. And life is good. But yeah, that's another thing to play around with this league. Very fun. Archmage enables this very, very well. Um, right, now. Speaking of Venn diagrams and overlapping AoE, I think the next thing we need to talk about is Kinetic Blast. Kinetic Blast is not that great with this thing. So now you would think, oh, if we just increase the AoE, eventually we'll be able to, um, to reach this middle. But the thing is, when you increase the AoE, it doesn't work as Awakened Spell Cascade, because Awakened Spell Cascade places the explosions slightly further away, but it doesn't seem to really be affected that much by the AoE. Now this skill, this radius right here, would keep growing outwards and outwards at a rate that would exceed whatever this would grow at, and you would always have the gap in the middle. So what happens, sadly, with Kinetic Blast is that no amount of AoE is ever going to give you the overlap, I believe. What you can do is you can smack it on a wall. So what you can do, if you if you put a wall on a monster and the Kinetic Blast, this explosion will be moved here. And this explosion will be moved here. That's why wall banging with Kinetic Blast has always been a thing. Why people like playing it in sewers, underground seas, uh, and those kind of maps. The only thing you can really do to get overlap with this is reduce AoE, which was possible in Kalandra, because we could like flip increased AoE to be reduced AoE, but that is no longer available, so forget about it. It's good in like the enclosed maps, wall maps, all those kind of maps. Uh, trying to bust with this is going to be misery. You can't do frost wall, doesn't work. That was nerfed many, many years ago. So yeah, just know that. Uh, the the change to the wording and all this has also been done on the regular gem. Now one thing that is interesting with Kinetic Blast of Crossstring is that it has mana giving you physical damage. So it's a great poison skill. Uh, GMP comes to mind. You can put it on totems. You can do all sorts of things. So you can like scale. You can do like mana stacking poison now. And you can even reserve your mana as well because it doesn't even care that it's reserved so you can have mana stacking while reserving mana and then playing as poison and all these kind of things so interesting and they have projectiles kind of be split so you can't fire it in and do return projectile and get overlap that way no 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 shenanigans um yeah, yeah. also on that note anything that used splits and return split return projectile has been severely nerfed because sniper's uh, mark got nerfed from five splits to two so just know that it's way way weaker for any build that utilized that before and now to the final thing that we're going to talk about, which is Summon Holy Relic of Conviction. It now spawns two, it doesn't heal anymore, and it's kind of cool. Uh, but the real cool thing about this skill is the green text, which is... Let's go, so it's the third line. That deals physical damage to enemies in an area around an enemy. Now, I can't show you this in game right now, but what Holy Relic used to do is that it will create an area of damage around itself, and it will trail behind you. Now, if you trigger this by firing forward, it'll trigger this damage on the enemies on them. So they don't even need to be next to them. And so we can just fire into enemies and kill them with our Holy Relic. So that should be really strong. I don't have a full setup for this yet. Um, I'll probably update this over time. Maybe I'll make a build out of it. Uh, I might do this in my leaks out. I haven't decided. But this is more like a proof of, or it's more like a, a concept here. Uh, this is like no gear, but basically. Um, it's just a, a foil with minion damage and some poison. Um, so minion damage and plus one uh, at level 84. What I was considering is that we could use a natural strength and then we use uh, the lantern steel spraying. And what we're just gonna do, we're just gonna spray into the pack and that's just gonna keep hitting with a holy relic. Now, what else benefits from me continuously attacking? Hail of Agony! Hey, and I checked it and with like a scuffed setup and the Hail of Agony, I was maintaining easily 45 virulent stacks, easily. So I'm thinking you can probably, with the right setup, we can probably easily maintain like 50 virulent stacks with landing steel and praying, spraying while also triggering the holy things. So like on a double falling setup, this is actually really cool. 
and then you just like you play it on your your net like your normal like um necro build and it's just kind of cool so yeah i think it's a kind of cool spell to to look at uh you can do all sorts of hilarious things as well while you do this um attack based thing you can do like life gain on hits you can have like energy shield on hit mana on hit you can do all sorts of things you can do like mom eb all this stuff and it should be really really strong but yeah any like on hit you can do um mana on hit life on hit energy shield on hit whatever on hit is great like life gain on hit with this is kind of correct because like this goes up to 10 projectiles probably doing three attacks per second, 30 projectiles times 50 is like 1500 life per second i'm just attacking this it's great it's great it's just great it's awesome um so yeah cool little skill some people ask me hey why don't you use the plus one uh to holy relic in the helmet isn't that better like amount of holy relics you can spawn and i would argue you are maybe as a starter as like a budget thing but you're always better off eventually getting a plus two rare helmet to all minion skills and setting it up that way generally speaking yeah but like this is not a complete one this is a work in progress and yep those are some league start musings and considerations very cool remember if i can do it you can too bye guys